What's up guys, Coop here, and today we're actually going to be looking at the Void Elves. Uh, specifically, all the requirements, uh, the new cinematic, and just in general all the different racials and things going on with that. Uh, this actual race seems to be the most like incomplete out of all of them, so uh, it's not going to be too big of a dive in, but we at least can see the requirements and all the different cinematics, and I think that would be relatively interesting to look at. So, good old MMO Champion has a really nice layout of showing us all the different stuff. So it kind of shows us what the backdrop is going to be, and it basically just describes in general all the different requirements and things that are needed for it. So first off, it says during the final push against the Legion, Illyria Run Windrunner learned how to harness the Void without falling to the madness by her mentor, the Locust Walker. The Void has a reputation of corrupting those who use it, but Illyria has since managed to train an underground outcasted Blood Elves to resist it at, as well. Uh, she and her followers have joined her husband to fight for the Alliance. So this is going to be relatively interesting. Um, we now know that for a fact that the Blood Elves are this race. It's not like some High Elves that kind of went over. It's specifically Blood Elves. And I found this very interesting because there is a whole fall of the Sunwell sort of scenario. It's not really the fall per se, but it's like more of like you fight against all the Void creatures that are inside of it. Uh, while they did have a ambassador from Suramar there. So that kind of explains how the Nightborn joined the Horde and how the Void Elves joined the Alliance. Uh, I think it's going to be relatively interesting going in for the future. So let's actually dive in and first look at the requirements. So the first thing is, is finishing the Argus campaign. So basically just do the last patch and you have it. Uh, the next thing is being exalted with Argent Reach. Now, I'm going to be probably making a whole separate video about how to do that. Uh, one of the best ways to do it, though, is mission tables. It just is. It's super duper easy uh, getting it that way. Uh, any other way is a little bit harder. But you, actually, you could try doing all the world quests, um, but that could be a little hard. Uh, if you do kind of a mixture of the mission tables along with some of the other aspects that I'm going to be showing in a different video, you're, you're, you're going to get it real fast, real quick. So definitely something to look at in the future. Now let's actually look at some of the classes that they could be. You have Hunter. So Hunters are pretty cool. You know, it's Illyria, so Hunters kind of makes sense. Uh, mage. So they can kind of do the Arcane. I guess I can kind of see that. Uh, mage is kind of pushing it a little bit. Monk makes no sense to me whatsoever. Like, it, they're all about Serenity and stuff, and you're kind of having Maddening Whispers. It just, uh, Monk just seems kind of like a weird thing to put there. I would rather there be something else in that place, but hey, it is what it is. It's not like they can be druids or anything. It's not magically inclined of them. Uh, priest. So, priest, shadow priest, makes sense. Uh, it'd be weird to see a holy uh, sort of void elf. <laughs> that kind of goes against a lot of what is going on. A disciplined priest kind of makes sense, but holy would be, definitely be a little bit weird. Uh, warrior. I'm super happy to see warrior on there. I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, Rogue, that's probably what I'm going to be running uh, my Void Elf as. And then Warlock also makes sense. So overall, pretty good uh, choices here. I just really, like Mage is kind of debatable, but I could push for it. Uh, Monk is the one that's just kind of like, hmm, a little too far out there. But I digress. Anyway, so let's actually look at the racials. The racials, I already made like a really good video about describing these, but it looks like they ended up sticking with it. So reduces shadow damage taken by 1%. Um, has like this weird transformation thing. We have yet to see that. I'm just assuming it's going to be how Illyria looked in the final cinematic of sort of the whole Seat of the Triumphant where she in just sort of the Naru and becomes all void-like. I think that's what they're going for with this. It'd be really easy to do an animation off of that. Uh, next is cost of void storage and transformation, or transmogrification is 50% off. So this is your fashion elves, basically. You get to do all the different fashion things at a reduced cost, and that is actually a lot of uh, money saved. I don't know if you guys know, but like doing almost a whole suit of armor and everything is pretty much like, I think like 250 to sometimes even higher of amount of gold. So that'll save you a lot in the long run. Uh, you got this ability here, which basically is, delays you from uh, when you're casting spells from taking damage. So that is going to be very helpful for the Hunter, the Mage, especially the Warlock. 
um, some of the priest abilities and most of the other ones uh, warrior and rogue and monk will not really see it uh, however I'm still gonna do rogue it just I feel like it fits the class fantasy really well next is terror rift in space activate to teleport through the rift so I think this is gonna be like you place like a rift down it's gonna have like that purple little rift uh, animation that you see in a lot of the areas in sort of uh, Argus so I think that'll be really cool uh, basically it's not gonna be I don't think it's gonna be how Warlock's gate works I think it's gonna be more of like you push this button and it teleports you back to where you were so it's kind of like uh, the one monk ability where they drop their spirits at and then they can teleport back to their spirit I think that's exactly how it's gonna work that's gonna be really powerful for PvP so I'm already thinking how a rogue can pretty much attack he's about to die clicks it goes back and then can like stealth out or figure out different ways to avoid abilities and that's just going to be really powerful pvp talent overall it's probably going to be one of the most powerful so the alliance gets yet another really powerful ability for racials a lot of people have commented that on my videos and i have to agree it's very powerful next is they have the good old star cursed void strider makes sense blood elf having a sort of strider and you know these guys have always kind of not been my favorite uh right now it doesn't look like the viewer is working for it but basically this is what they look like they're really cool they're just like a really cool looking chocobo thing uh but it it, it looks okay it, it makes sense for the race it just in general it just makes sense uh i i wish they had a cooler mount but i could see people rocking this next is if you get the boost you get heritage armor so we'll take a look at that so that's what it looks like on like a female character basically really cool pauldron I, I love the effect on it so um, when you see this kind of like weird gas coming out and it kind of looks very unnatural keep in mind this is a view thing with a transparent background if it's actually in the world it looks a little bit cooler so whenever you see these kind of goofy animations of like a circle uh, keep that in mind that it will look a lot better once it's in an actual environment not a transparent background but it looks cool um, for the females though it looks like they're just not getting a chest piece so it just kind of shows their sort of undergarments Eh, it's okay uh, it's perfect for those guys who like to do slut mog and if you look at the male race of the void elves we have here which is another really cool looking set not much of a difference here because besides obviously not showing an underbra but really cool altogether so uh, I don't know why they even have this being named it's I mean it's a mantle but basically it's like hey do you just not want to wear a shirt that's basically what that is but the rest of this gear looks awesome uh, just in general it's one of the cooler heritage armors and I could see someone actually wanting to level up mainly just for the one thing which is the shoulders the shoulders just have such a cool animation with it and everything going forward but you'll be able to get this once you hit 110 without a boost so if you level through the whole new leveling system which some people like some people don't like I personally think it's okay because uh, it gives us something to do uh, especially because you guys got to keep in mind they're probably gonna make this like a pre-order bonus where you can just level up uh, a void elf or a light forge drain eye for the Alliance and then the other races for the horde so having that sort of long gated system of having a long leveling style is not a bad thing in my opinion but and then now we actually get to watch the cinematic I just watched it it's super cool so we'll watch it one more time over all right the void a force of infinite hunger its whispers have broken the will of dragons Deathwing. And lured even the Titan's own children into madness. Well, so the Titan Keepers. <laughs> fear the Lord, but we understand the truth that they do not. That the Void is a power to be harnessed, to be bent uh. by a will strong enough to command it. Locust Walker, it looks like. The Void has shaped us, changed us, but you will become its master. Wield the shadows as a weapon to save our world and defend the alliance. All right, so that was basically the cinematic. Her like just talking gives me chills now. <laughs> like especially once she's kind of embraced the void. Uh, 
I still don't like Locust Walker, um, and I still debate where it's like, oh, we've controlled the void. I'm just like, mm, have you really though? I don't know. It just, I just, I, I kind of debate that a lot, especially going forward. I just, um, I don't know. It's an interesting pick. I think it's going to add a lot more story and collision later on because I feel like eventually we're going to have to fight some of the more crazier people out there, especially going forward. And I don't know. The void as sort of a power source, I, I understand, but it seems weird. I mean, we had Demon Hunters with Fell, but Void is a little bit different. It's very easy to corrupt. So I could see a lot of Void Elves turning to the dark side real quick, real fast. But I think it's going to be an interesting lore point. And I think Collision especially is important for World of Warcraft. When you have debates and things of morality and sort of power source and these sort of risks that they take, I think that's going to make an overall better storytelling aspect to it. So... That'll be interesting. Now, I'm not going to play this video. This video is super... I mean, there's so many videos out there. And uh, just in general, like, you can find this video out there. Uh, there's actually more than this video. And I think uh, it would be better just for you guys to hear. Because I don't want to have to be, like, sitting here trying to give feedback about voiceover and silly jokes. I think there's a lot of good ones already out there. Now, one of the coolest things about here is we actually get to do the character customization. So... Uh, basically, it has a lot of the normal Blood Elf stuff, but it does have a little bit more of the edgy sort of hairstyles and everything. But some of the hairstyles actually have some cool stuff. So let's actually go kind of spot down here. So as you can see here, they have this sort of cool animation with the hair. Uh, some people say it looks a little tacky, uh, but if you, once again, transparent world, add it in the actual world. And also keep in mind that they're going to be doing little tweaks and stuff along the way. Uh, Alpha's not even really fully out, but really cool nonetheless all the different stuff that they have here so as you can see there and there's actually tentacles in the back like those aren't actual like hair pieces now one of the things that you do have to keep in mind is one of the hairstyles gets rid of the tentacles completely so like they don't even glow I don't know if that's gonna be in the game but I'm assuming that they're gonna do that for people that just don't want to have the tentacles uh, but they have a lot of different cool hairstyles uh, some of them are not fully developed but you have like the purple silver that blue and then obviously the black I already showed you and then I'll show you the female uh, like I said though a lot of them don't seem to be finished if you actually look at a lot of the faces of the females they don't really look that distinct so that one's like a, just a little smidge difference that one has like a little bit there but they're just like not different enough I think to the point where I would say that they probably need to revisit the faces a bit because the only thing that seems l literally different is the makeup but I think it can pass honestly for what it is right now and it's got all its different hairstyles uh, I like um more specifically I like how the hair looks on the females better than the males at the moment um, facial hair I like how it, right now if you look at the model viewer and it says facial hair for females but uh, it basically just copies a lot of the sort of uh, elvish uh, sort of hairstyles and stuff that they already had there's a lot of goatees so for those guys who've got goatees out there you will be happy but not enough beards needs more beards comment number one uh, skin colors you have kind of like uh, goes from white to like a lighter blue to a silver to dark blue to a pretty much completely I don't want to say black but it's like a darker purple and then back to like being super pale uh, if you notice the first and the last one they kind of look too similar so I'm hoping that there's gonna be a little bit more distinction time will tell though overall though my impressions of the void elves are this I think from a lore perspective they're worrisome because I'm I, I'm I, like I said lore wise it's going to be great but in my personal opinion, as a person of the Alliance, I'd be like, mm, I don't really trust these guys. I feel like there there's a lot of room to gather from that. Uh, especially because we'll have the Light Forge, which are all about the light, and we have the Void, which is all about the, you know, dark. <laughs> so it, it's going to definitely add some clash. If Battle for Azeroth, if they don't add sort of collision between those two races, I don't know what they're doing storytelling-wise. Because that, like, it makes sense for those two races to kind of butt heads a lot. So I hope to see a lot of that. Other than that, though, um, I'm interested to see because they have like these starting zones. And or originally they said like, oh, you'll be level 20. And they just throw you out in the world. But now they're showing starting zones. So 
I don't know what gives there. Are, are we getting starting zones for each of the new races? Are we not? Because I was under the impression that it was going to be a lot of development time with that. But who knows? Maybe uh, maybe they kind of backtracked on that and they're like, yeah, let's just make some starting zones. Uh, who knows? I'm hoping that they do, uh, especially with all the development time that Battle for Azeroth is probably going to take. I'm very curious to see where it's going to go. Uh, or maybe it's just like an initial like five level quest line and then boom, you're out. So, uh, very curious, very curious indeed. I think their heritage armor is pretty much spot on. Uh, I mean, I can't really complain too much about it. Uh, I do, I do think that this is going to be a set that kind of wears down after a while. But the shoulder pads are probably going to be in every in every single like transmog out there. Uh, mount is okay. Racials are ten out of ten. Just you know, they don't take as much shadow damage. They have a really cool sort of flashy ability. They have a novelty sort of quality of life thing they have a good pve talent and a P good pvp slash pve talent it, it's just very useful i can see everybody using something from this uh some of the classes are not going to be able to use the calm ability as much uh so i don't think m monks and well actually no healing monks would probably use it uh but warriors and rogues probably won't be using that at all but i think it's still a pretty good thing overall but anyways, I just wanted to give you guys my opinions on the Void Elves. I thought they were pretty cool, and they're actually one of my favorite races to talk about. So anyways, I thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.